All right. I call the regular meeting of the Millican Board of Trustees for September 8th, 2021 to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Will the town clerk please call roll? Trustee Granquist. Here. Trustee Long. Here. Trustee Meisner. Here. Trustee Rodriguez. Here. Trustee Wakeman. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich. Here. Mayor Austin. Here. Does anyone have any additions or deletions to the agenda? I move that we approve the agenda. Oh. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. I have a couple of additions to the discussion agenda, adding the weeds at the grain elevator and speeding and running stop signs in town. Oh. Anything else? Huh? Are they going fast? <laughs> Both. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, it's just the way you said it. Yeah. Now I'll take a motion. I move that we approve the agenda as amended. Second. Second. <laughs> Sam Clark, please call for a vote. Trustee Long? Yes. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Granquist? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Do we have any citizens' comments this evening? Okay, we'll skip right over that little spiel. Go right on to meeting minutes. Is there any discussion or comments on the meeting minutes of August 25th? Hearing none, I'll take a motion. I move to approve August 25th, 2021 minutes. Second. Town clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Long? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Mayor Austin? Yes. Uh, Trustee Granquist? Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> All righty. Town administrators report. Administrator Powell. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, so um, through many conversations um, and suggested amendments uh, to our current intergovernmental agreement with the city of Greeley, uh, for water treatment, uh, Millican staff, and the city of Greeley staff have reached an agreement um, for what's to be amended. Um, Greeley will be taking this to amended agreement to their water board next week. And if passed, um, it will reduce our treatment costs that we are currently paying. Um, and it will also um, increase our water portfolio. I had to look at Don because he gave me that word earlier today. So, um, but in truth, what it is, is um, the amended agreement between staff, both city of Greeley and ours, they will treat our GLIC water. And um, so that will certainly help with our um, portfolio in the water <clears throat> department, if you will. Um, it, um, still has to go through water court, our GLIC water. Um, but this has to be the first step because Greeley is the only one that's treats, that treats the GLIC water. And if they did not agree to treat it, it's no point in taking it through water court and spending the extra money in which to do that. So um, I hope we'll know by next week if the board, their board, their water board approves this agreement. So. Good job, Cheryl. Yeah, it'll be nice to have. Um, broadband study is, is starting to wind down. Um, the consultants uh, will be working on a summary to provide the board and council for the members of our board, Johnstowns, Mead, and Berthoud. Um, you know, what's imperative to Milliken um, is the election in November um, regarding Senate Bill 152 and whether or not you know, if the Millican residents pass or fail, this um, will have a direct impact. But we have to continue forward looking at it. I think this is a good opportunity. Um, 
we've received um, some cost estimates, um, which I'm not going to tell you because <laughs> they're pretty significant. But at this time, there's a lot of funding from the federal government for these types of projects. Um, and, and we fit very well into those categories that they're looking at. So um, I will keep you updated on that. And whether we hear from the consultants prior to the November election or not, I don't know. But hopefully it, it would be soon, right after or right before. Yes, ma'am. Can we have a Q&A session with the public, maybe over at TRPR facilities? I don't know um, if we can do that. Within a time frame prior to putting SB 152 on the election ballot? Well, I think that's possible as long as we're not using town property. The, the, the statute focuses primarily on use of town property, town, everything from paper, faxes, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's a meeting, to, I mean, if we have multiple board members participate in that, then they are, then it has to be noticed. Right. Um, and let, let me look at that a little more closely because that is the, the board taking a side, which is okay. You can pass a resolution. Let me look at that. But it would be presenting pros and cons? Uh, well, the board can certainly prepare a pro-con statement uh, conducting a question and answer session might be neutral enough. Okay. If you can provide us that information, if we need to do that, I'd like to get it scheduled and going so residents are aware prior to election time. Thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Um, where do I leave off? Um, well, as we uh, discussed in the work session with the school board regarding the uh, student resource officer agreement and the cash and lieu agreement, that's been um, um, a couple documents that I've been reviewing and working on as well. Um, we had to have some repairs made at the wastewater treatment plant. It was due to a broken six inch um, airline. Is it a pipe done? So um, anyway, um, not to get too graphic, but we had a geyser going out in that area that um, was not um, a good thing. So um, that's been repaired. Um, Parks has continued to work on Outlot D. I believe we're nearing completion on that. Um, the majority of the funding has come from, actually all the funding so far has come from the contribution that the Metro District made of $50,000. So uh, I, I think, uh, we will certainly be spending all the money. We spent a good portion of it already. Um, but I think you'll be impressed with how that area, um, that scrap of area that the town received um, is going to be looking. So uh, Streets Department has been working on sidewalk replacement. So they're looking at the worst sidewalks and, and ones that we could repair and or you know take out and replace. Um, so uh, today I was asked about whether we test at our lakes. Um, I guess there was a report of some dead fish at Centennial Lake. Um, we do not typically test at the lakes, but we could call the Department of Wildlife, ask them to come out. Um, I don't know the amount of, of fish that have died. Um, I don't know if it's a few or, or many, but um, we certainly can call the Department of Wildlife and ask them to come out and do the testing and make sure those lakes are doing what they're supposed to for our fish. So. That'd be considered a school safety resource officer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more or less like catch and release and how okay. they survive the release. So I don't know, um, but we will find out. So because they do stock the lakes for us, and and I know it's a it's a, a pleasant pastime for a lot of kids and adults to go fishing there. So. Yeah, we do have dogs that like to swim in the lake. Not now. Yeah, most, I don't know if you've been watching the news, but most of the lakes in the area have been suggesting you do not, and they've actually had signs posted, no swimming and, and, and not letting your pets swim in the lakes as well. Yeah. Out of the problem. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor. Trustee. Yeah, I would like to provide a little more in, uh, input on the question that was posed to me a little bit ago. 
Yes. I have some concerns that a meeting noticed at public expense uh, would not meet the requirements of the statute. I'm afraid uh, the, the, the statute contemplates a written um, statement with pros and cons, and I am very concerned that if we have a meeting, we're going to come off being, being very supportive of that ballot measure. So I, I, I'm probably going to recommend against holding something like that, just because public money is going to be spent noticing the meeting and taking minutes, etc. Can we do a resolution? And we can do a resolution, it? certainly. Yes, we, as long as it's just distributed way, through the normal channels. Right. Yeah, we need some way to inform the public so that can they're they aware. Any individual member of the board can support uh, on his or own time and dime uh, to support the passage of that, that ballot. Same with staff. It's just that you can't use public money in any way. <coughs> okay. Okay. I just... I looked that up while we are sitting here. I wanted to provide some immediate feedback. Thank you. Trustee Wakeman, you had a question? Yes. Um, Cheryl, were we able to remove the um, uh, paragraph, I guess it is, uh, in the water agreement with Greeley about annexing north of? No. But, um, so, that, 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 that's kind of a difficult one because at the same time Greeley was trying to add in um, that we were responsible for that entire transmission line. Um, that, was a, that was an area that was caught by um, both Don and myself. And um, we're like, wait, we can't even go any further than 54. Mm -hmm. Why would we want to be responsible for further north of that, of the transmission line, when it's out of our growth area? Mm -hmm. And so um, that was removed. But um, no, uh, I think they have plans for that area already. So, no, that was not something that was able to be done. Well, that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Alrighty. Thank you for your report. Uh, consent agenda, we don't have anything, so we'll move on to the action agenda. And the first item is consideration and approval of ordinance number 794 uh, concerning 1301 Broad Street. Matt Gould, the town attorney. Yes. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a matter that has been discussed by the board. This is the property that I think is known as the grain elevator. Uh, we approached, after a meeting with the board, we approached Mr. Hunziker with a proposal that we thought might help him to market this property. Uh, I, I put some details in the Board of Trustee memo just providing a background. Um, we have to do this by ordinance if there's going to be a conveyance of town interest in real estate, and, and I think that's what we have. Uh, the proposal, basically, uh, we're, we were looking to protect the town's right to recover a reimbursement in the amount of $20,000 for a sewer, ex sewer line extension. And uh, two ideas that were considered, one was um, a promissory note and deed of trust so that we would have a lien on the property, but there are some uh, provisions in the Constitution that make me nervous about anything that looks like a loan. So instead, what we have set up is that the town will release its interest at any closing that he holds on the sale of the property. Um, this has been circulated to him. Uh, he did, well, the initial proposal he was very receptive to. Uh, we've circulated this to him and asked for any input he has over several days, and he has not offered any. He doesn't apparently have an advisor. Uh, he's looking at this himself. So uh, this is the way we think we need to approach it and present it to him. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Questions from the board? Um, Trustee Grenquist? None. Trustee Long? I'm kind of trying to understand what the history is prior to like the 2018 stuff that was referenced here with the special warranty deed. 
So let me see if I can address your question. I know part of it. Uh, what I can tell you is that in 2018, the property was deeded to this, to this gentleman, but there were conditions in the deed that he was supposed to meet. Uh, and if he failed to do that, then there was a process that the town was supposed to follow. But the town can basically recover the property, recover ownership of the property, if, if it chooses to do so upon his violation and then executing all those procedures. Uh, it, it isn't clear, but it certainly is a board decision whether the town wants to wants to own the property. It, I, th I think my understanding is that a better plan is to allow the property to be marketed so somebody can buy it that will put it to good use and to support that um, it, it's it's the proposal is uh, to release all interests in the property at the time that he sells the property so that that should allow him to market the property to somebody that wants it D does that kind of give you enough background yeah okay yes that leave you with any other questions just you want no, I think I'm good. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? I have none. Trustee Wakeman? So is that his intent, is to sell the property? Yeah. Or you know, uh, I can't speak for him, but I think he does want to because he had it listed for sale. And my suspicion is that somebody looked at the title and they realized that, that there's nothing there to buy as long as the town holds this you know, right of reverter or whatever it's called. Um, and so it couldn't be marketed. So this should allow it to be marketed. But as far as his intent, um, I mean, I, I think that he has some personal setbacks that make him want to sell it. Rodriguez? I have no questions. Trustee Meisner? No, I have no questions. Okay. Any further discussion at all? Hearing none, I'll take a motion. I move to approve. Whoops. Thank you. I move to approve ordinance number 794, an ordinance of the town of Millican, Colorado, authorizing release of certain conditions and restrictions set forth in a deed to Mr. Peter Hunsaker. Second. Thank you. I don't know what happened to mine. Town clerk, please call for the vote. Trustee Granquist? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Long? Yes. Trustee Meisner? Yes. Trustee Rodriguez? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich? Yes. Mayor Austin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Consideration and approval for a proposal for a traffic impact study, <coughs> traffic signal warrant study, um, traffic data collection and concept design evaluation. Cheryl Powell, town administrator. Yes, Mayor and, and members of the board. Um, this is um, a uh, proposal I spoke to at the last work session. Um, I had a few questions um, in regard to uh, the proposal that I quickly re received answers to, and, and part of that was the cost to do um, Weld County Road 25, if that was a you know big added expense, and it was not um, to this proposal. Um, and I explained why I wanted 25 done because I believe it receives a lot more traffic on it than what is deemed by the county at this time. Um, and in, in hopes that they would probably do some improvements to that road. Um, the traffic study was conducted. Um, it was conducted on, did I have it? <laughs> the, the Sorry, it was on Tuesday, right? And it was Tuesday after school started, I believe. You're right, Tuesday, August 31st, sorry. <clears throat> um, so that was completed. Uh, we will have the, the count in, within five weeks of that study. 
Um, and I am hoping that it meets the warrants and that we receive some funding help from uh, CDOT on that intersection. Um, at the same time, they did 25, they did 23 and three quarters and Centennial Drive. Um, and uh, the reason for it being done sooner rather than later, as much like last year, we started out the school year and then we were schooling from home. Um, so in, in light of that, we wanted to conduct it right after school started and before a holiday. I believe the last study was done on a holiday weekend. Um, <laughs> and so that was a real waste at that point in time. So um, anyway, um, I did see the polls up. Um, I did see plenty of traffic and it wasn't just my vehicle going around. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> even though I did end up on that road twice that day. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I would sincerely hope, it, it is a very scary intersection and I think it's a very big safety concern for our municipality to have that intersection as it is. So, I'd be so happy to. Was that to part of the study that was downtown? So when originally when they did the one for Alice, is that what you're talking about? Um, I thought it was more like uh, maybe between Kathleen and... That I don't know what that was. That was the CDOT ADA. Oh, it was the ADA? Yeah. CDOT was out doing a study on the ADA areas. Okay. So. So is the, is the intended use of this result to then encourage the county to uh, advance their repair process? Well, it, it's, it's twofold. So yes, I would like to be able to provide the county with true traffic numbers for Weld County Road 25. It is their road. Um, the mayor and I did approach them um, a while back uh, to speak to them about it. And um, they, they plan out four to five years uh, and that is nowhere on their radar at this point in time. And as a matter of fact, we were told that the amount of traffic that goes down that road doesn't even warrant uh, dust suppression at this time, which I don't agree with. So, you know, not trying to absorb what they have, I want to be able to provide them with what we're seeing on a daily basis. Um, so there's that part. The other part of it is um, in hopes to get another traffic signal out there. I think um, we need to have that at that intersection. People trying to turn you know, west off of Centennial Drive, um, you're watching cars coming at you from both directions going 55 miles an hour. And at the same time, as you're trying to turn left, there's a person next to you trying to turn right to head east. And you know, with the line of sight there, it, it's, it's a bad accident waiting to happen. And at the same time, you've got truck traffic coming off of 23 and three quarter. They do have an accelerator lane heading west, but um, still, if they wanna go east, um, it's, it's great difficulty. So um, it's, it's a matter of time. And I think with the addition of um, Civica, in the area, um, the, the bigger use of the MAC facility, um, you got the school admin building, you have a lot of parents that take their children to Knowledge Quest Academy that use those roads to um, come back out onto 60, whether they're going to, to and from home or, or to work. Um, it, it's a very busy intersection first thing in the morning. So um, I think with hopes it meets the warrants and um, that we can get another signal line put in. This, are you thinking a, com a combined signal between 23 and a half and 25? Some, some 23, half? no, no, I, I don't think a combined signal. I think having, right now 25 is nothing but gravel. Okay. Right. Um, I think to have it paved mm -hmm. um, would be much nicer. I believe that if we do have a signal light put in at Centennial and 23 and three quarters, that um, people heading, um, coming from the east are gonna turn down Weld County Road 25 in order to bypass that signal light mm -hmm. when possible. So I think you'll even have an increased amount of traffic there. 
So. And then we'll have kids driving to school probably next year going to Civica. So now you're going to add that level um, to the traffic there and inexperienced drivers. Um, <coughs> so. I presume once the lights put in, it's maintained and, and programmed by the county? Yeah, it'll be on a CDOT road, so we have to do it in conjunction with CDOT. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I guess one of the requests or thoughts I have is that, like, <clears throat> you get so many lights through town, if they're, either, if they're either not synchronized or they don't roll at 10 p.m. or something to a flashing yellow-red, I think that would be kind of more... 60 and 257 makes sense because you got two ways that are really heavy, but this way going 60, if you're going out of town and you hit, you know, Alice and whatever else heading that way, um, having those go to a flashing red, flashing yellow from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. or whatever it is would be more convenient on that road. I think they would probably... and Alice favors 60 <laughs> yeah. at night and only triggers a light on Alice right. if you hit the hit the sensor right. yeah and I do and like I, those but I, I above those I favor the the blink the flashing from the time frame because it, it just I've seen it happen a number of times you're coming through and there's one person that could have waited two more seconds for you to go through but then you know it turns red you're the only person on 60 <laughs> you have to stop yes. and let the one person turn and then go if it's just flashing red we can you know, use our individual freedoms and wisdom and understanding. And then perhaps so, okay, that someone there, you know, I've got the flashing yellow. They're going to stop and red. They look both ways and they can go. They have to sit there and wait to trigger a light. Right. Awesome. And I see what you're saying. You know, with with maybe with an additional light there, they might do that. Um, you know, as the mayor wants to speak tonight, we're having problems with people stopping at stop signs. So. Um, I was just going to yeah. say, too, is there's a bar over there, so I think having a stoplight where a bar is at is a, probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even after midnight. I think if they're not going to stop at a stoplight, they're not going to stop at a stop sign or, a, you know, none of it. I mean, either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. I think, I think some, uh, you know, putting the responsibility back on the individual is important. Well, you would like to think everybody is, but as we've seen by recent accidents with the car that got pushed into the train recently. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Not quite the case. Yeah. Car I mean, we've got a stoplight. We've got a stoplight in 257, and my wife and I were going north, and our light was green, theirs was red, and this truck just came and started turning right in front of us, and he saw us last minute. Big sand truck, two, two bins. And, you know, I saw him coming, so I slowed down to see what he was going to do, and then he saw us. But, you know, whether it was flashing or not, whether it was, it, he wasn't stopping anyhow. So, right. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I, I see the sentiment, but I'm not sure I, I fully agree with whether there's drunks or not or whoever, you know, they shouldn't be driving, period. If they're going to stop at a stoplight, they should also stop at a flashing red. And, and kind of there, there might be criteria yes. from CDOT on how they do handle that when there's so many lights in a row. Right. Okay. So, I, but that's a good question. Where at? Okay. Again, yeah. Any other comment? Okay, this was more of a roundtable discussion. So at this point, unless anybody has anything else, so I'll take a motion. I move to authorize the town administrator to sign the proposal for the traffic impact study, the traffic signal warrant study, traffic data collection and concept design evaluation for intersections of um, Weld County Road 23 and three quarters, Centennial Drive, Weld County Road 25, and Highway 60. Second. <clears throat> Town Clerk, please call for a vote. Trustee Long. Yes. Trustee Meisner. Yes. Trustee Rodriguez. Yes. Trustee Wakeman. Yes. Trustee Granquist. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Ehrlich. Yes. Mayor Austin. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. That Thank concludes you. our action agenda. On to the discussion agenda. First item is. Cherry Street, Cheryl Powell, Town Administrator. Yes, I just wanted to, because I, I mentioned um, to you at the last work session, or last meeting rather, that um, it, we're looking at the um, improvements for the drainage on, on Cherry Street, and it's an area that's been impacted for many years when we receive heavy rains um, for those folks down there. 
I mean, we did take care of the Josephine um, storm drainage, um, but these folks still receive impact from the drainage that occurs um, during heavy rains. And so it's another area that needs to be looked at. The road needs to be redone, of course, if we do that. Um, I just wanted to get an idea of what a full engineering um, cost would be on that. This is just a proposal just for discussion. Um, and, and the same thing with the next one regarding uh, the rehabilitation of 23 and 3 quarters. I don't know if any of you have driven down that road. Um, I would suggest doing it, but slowly. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's crumbling apart, if you will. There's no curb and gutter. Um, we put tons, I mean, what was it, 6,000 ton at least once this year that we've put on the, the side because it, it's literally crumbling off every year of asphalt um, in order to just try to keep that road together in the best way we can. We have trucks driving up and down that road. Um, we now have pedestrian traffic with the um, marijuana dispensary right there um, also. And, and again, I think it's, it's just another something waiting to happen. That road is failing and has failed. Um, it probably was never built to the standard it needed to be to um, receive that kind of traffic, the weight otherwise. Um, so I asked them to put proposals together for me on that as well. Um, I've also reached out to Chris LeMay with Department of Local Affairs. And my question to them was this, um, a lot of times you cannot receive grant funding um, if, you haven't, if you don't have um, the engineering done. But my question to him, because these costs are quite significant, if there are grants available through Department of Local Affairs to, that would cover the engineering and the actual rehabilitation of 23 and 3 quarters and or the storm drainage project on Cherry Street. I have not heard back from him yet. Um, I know a lot of people are still working remotely and those that aren't are trying to play catch up on areas that they haven't gotten to in the last six months. So um, I do anticipate hearing from him within this next week um, in regard to my questions. Because I think it will make a big impact on our budget whether we have to look at um, you know, maybe having to spend um, the money to have the engineering done in order to go out for grants. So I would like to have those answers um, by DOLA sooner rather than later um, in time for this budget um, year. So, but I just wanted to show you what those costs were and what they would entail as far as um, you know, they, I, I had our engineers, um, Tate, look at Weld County Road 23 and 3 quarters and, you know, it was, it, they just kind of shook their head and, and they said, don't know for sure, but just looking at it, it it's going to have to, you know, it's, the road's going to have to be scrapped and redone. So. So if we have to scrap the road, we would put in curb gutter and sidewalk? Correct. And do it all at least do curb and gutter um, all the way down. Sidewalk, perhaps in the commercial area. Mm -hmm. we, you don't necessarily need the sidewalk in the industrial areas. No. But definitely, I would um, <laughs> put it in the commercial area. Okay. Mm. okay. So. And when will you know the cost on the um, engineering? I do have the proposed cost on engineering on both of them. That was in the packet. Oh, that's what But I, I wanted to find out from Department of Local Affairs if they would cover mm -hmm. the costs of engineering on, on these types of projects. Okay. So. I'm with you now. Sorry. No, it's okay. Any questions from the board on the Cherry Street or Well County Road 23 and 3 quarters? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Needs at the grain elevator. I believe we issued a citation for that. Are we at the point where we're going to abate that? Yes. And that has been looked at.
looking really bad for like six weeks. It's been a it's been a troubled, bad location. Uh, I mean, when when Lori was was with us, the code enforcement officer we had, we had a tough time with uh, Huns Hunsaker. We had a tough time with him with uh, cutting weeds. He's, I don't know if he lives here in town. He always has to have somebody come and cut his weeds for him. Um, so we did have a, a tough time. So now that we did, um, he cut him the last time, but they didn't do a good job. Of, I mean, they just looked like they just trimmed him. But uh, yes, the next step, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Do they we were cut, but they were, they were cut to a minimum of, um, I think it was three inches. It wasn't an abatement. Yeah. It wasn't an abatement, so. but we are in the process of abating that since we did give him, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a problem location for us, so. Don't we have a contract with an abatement service? We do. Yep. So our mowing service does abatements for us. So if we have to call them out, if they're not done, they will go out and, and take care of them. And they'll do a better job in getting them below three inches? Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. They did. They did do it once last year. Okay. Yep. Do we have a time frame yeah. when we think that could happen? Uh, ten day notice. It is a ten day notice per our code uh, for the uh, for the abatement notice. So if he doesn't comply within the ten day notice, then we reach out to our abatement services. So we're within cut. the ten day notice period. Yes. Because those yeah, weeds have been there a lot longer. Yeah. yeah. And I did have a conversation with uh, uh, with Administrator Powell regarding that location. I wasn't sure. I know there was conversation about that property with the board. I wasn't sure uh, where we were at with that, but uh, we were given the go ahead to go ahead and abate it. Get my weed whacker out and I'll go over there. I mean, I, I'll go out there and do it. What? <laughs> <laughs> I just really feel like, in general, a town's looking pretty rough, but we have a lot of property owners that are not maintaining their properties. Um, the intersection of Kathleen and Broad um, mm -hmm. Street um, looks to me like even maybe we have some town issues there, but um, some weeds. Just would really like to. See us oh, yeah, and, and I agree. I Just agree. A lot of the. About some mobile RVs that are parked down there. Somebody mentioned that to me, and I had forgotten about it. Um, I'm I'm specifically talking about weeds, but I don't. I just really feel like we have some some rough looking properties that um, we, I have had people talk to me about it, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, about maybe some other properties, but just yeah. just in in general, I wish we could somehow encourage people to maintain well, one their of those, properties uh, better. One of the properties that you're you're talking about, I think that was uh, that was maintained well prior to the the previous owner, mm -hmm. but I think he did pass away. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful, beautiful place, but right. sometimes you get owners that come in that don't take that type of uh, sure. um, no care for their right. property. But we did so issue some process, ci citations yeah. there. Yeah. So uh, so they'll be coming into court for that property there that you're talking about. Well, I know that with our previous code enforcement officer, we used to get a lot of negative comments on social media because <clears throat> that officer was out there quite frequently mm -hmm. uh, writing tickets <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. around town at least once a week. I don't know if we're still following that process, but I have to agree with Trustee Wakeman. It is, um, we have some problem areas. Well, and in and, and follow up with that, um, there have been more um, people call complaints, whether somebody calls um, mm -hmm. or stops in and asks questions. Um, and so, uh, you know, you know, we have to follow our town code. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's <clears throat> what we're trying to do. Most of the the code enforcement officer does drive around. 
um, but most of the complaint, you know, things that we have been addressing have been complaint based. Um, our staff has been short staffed, our parks department um, has been short staffed and we're now up to a full staff. Um, so hopefully um, some of the areas, um, Trustee Wakeman, that you've seen that are ours um, will be addressed. Right. But, um, you know, it's, it's been a bad weed year again. Um, weeds will grow whether there's rain or not. Um, but, uh, you know, you're absolutely correct. We're doing our best in a lot of areas in town to um, enhance them, you know, like we did by Fireman's Park and what we're trying to do with Outlet D. Um, and we want to keep that going. Mm -hmm. But we do know there's additional areas that sure. need attention as well. And one of the things also that we, um, the philosophy is um, for code enforcement is to have that, uh, to gain voluntary compliance with folks. Give them an opportunity to cut their weeds give, before you cite. Uh, give them an opportunity to clean their, their property. So that's one of the things that we focused on uh, this year. But there are a lot of folks that aren't complying and uh, receiving tickets, so. Well, I felt like that our town Staff has done a great job. A lot of mm -hmm. areas are neat and tidy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. parks and such. It's more of just a few uh, residential properties here and there that are yeah. becoming a problem along with the, of course, the green elevator. Well, yeah, some of the outlier areas, you know, um, I, I do I do give a lot of credit to, you know, Keith's staff and, and, and Keith in particular. I mean, I look at Windmill Park and what a huge difference than it yes. was a few years ago. Um, yeah. You know, Fireman's Park, I'm, I'm excited to see the burning bushes um, that occurred this fall. So, um, you know, and I, I wanted to run out with him to look at Outlot D last week, um, but I, my day got busy and I wasn't able to do so. But um, native grass has been put down out there. Um, Keith's finishing up the irrigation on that um, for that, uh, the watering for that. And um, hopefully that'll be going and, and, and give it a chance to start germinating before the winter hits. So um, the trees have been planted, um, rose bushes have been planted, additional shrubs will probably be planted. We, we, we're looking at our budget to see where we're at. Um, the Crusher Fine walkway has been put down. So um, it's a lot better than what it had been. I've been using but it daily. Have you? Wonderful. Good. <laughs> yeah. It's We're a perfect at, like half mile walk from right. my house back to my house. It's We're great. trying to figure out um, putting a couple of benches out there where a good placement would be because I know a lot of folks like to take a walk. Mm -hmm. and, and I know I've heard from um, some of our more senior residents that they'd like to go for a walk too, but they need a place to sit and rest. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they like to sit and talk. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we would like to do that out there as well. I was going to suggest, I did hear, have somebody mention to me um, trash receptacles by yeah. the benches, even the existing benches, like around Ehrlich Lake. Um, I know we do have some, um, but if we put them right by the benches, because we're finding a lot of trash. Okay. Um, well, along I appreciate with walking that. Paths. Keith's making a note right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. I mean, we need to hear those things of people that use them. Um, you know, we know they're there. We don't generally get to utilize them, but, um, you know, whatever um, items you see that we could do better at as far as those types of things, please don't hesitate to send an email or something. So that's an easy remedy. Hi. Our parks are looking great. It's like housework. What you've done doesn't show. What you haven't done shows a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, okay, discussion on weeds. Great job on the parks. Now let's talk about the speeding in town. So <clears throat> I've received several complaints. And yes, you try to get people to direct those complaints either to the police department or uh, even town administrator. And they're not always willing to do those. but. Really, the discussion is turning into what do we do? We wait until a child gets hit, uh, and some of it is getting pretty atrocious. So the complaints in particular that, that I've had is one small white car doing 40 to 50 miles an hour down Juneberry. Um, in my own subdivision, Colony Point, 
the way that Saddleback Drive goes is there's just a long curve and it's turning into a bit of a racetrack even though there is a stop sign somewhere along there. Um, people are reaching the speed limit pretty quickly. And, and running that stop sign. Yeah. And then of course we have the speeding problems that always occur <coughs> in Sutter's Village and people um, are posting on social media. There's a flashing sign that we paid to put in about Civica School, 15 miles an hour, and it's being just disregarded. So I'm not sure what the answer is between the speeding or the running of stop signs, mm -hmm. but I definitely am not interested in waiting until a child gets hurt or killed yeah. before yeah. action is taken. So my question to you, Chief Garcia, is what can we do uh, about the situation, especially with school back in session? Well, I think one of the things that we can do is we can got to go out there and, and look at the, do we need uh, traffic calming measures, speed limit signs, do we need, you know, other stop signs, you know, what can we do out there? So I'd have to go out there and just take a look at the area to see what type of uh, plan we can develop as far as uh, speeding, stop signs, those type of things. So developing a plan is uh, the first part would be to go out there and, and assess the the location so that's one of the things that we can do that's where we would start mm -hmm. should I say mm -hmm. um, um, but it's good to know those different types of locations because a lot of the times and you're correct you know a lot of times people don't they don't want to call in because they don't want to um, they don't want to seem like they're telling on somebody or they don't want you know their their name to be to be said so um, but yeah, that, that does happen, so. Just do you want, do you know if there's a certain time of day down Saddleback that it's a problem? It's further down for me. Um, generally, it's after high school hours. There is one car in particular that is a big problem um, at our end. Um, we actually have a license plate number. I'm looking to see if I have it, which we can nice. connect later, but yeah. um, I mean, that's now that there's there's some people that have moved out, so it's become less of an issue down there, but mm -hmm. um, the weekends too, when people are in and out all the time, mm -hmm. um, that was when a big part of it got raised. Um, but generally it's like between like two and six, I would say, okay. in the evenings during the week, and then all weekend long. All weekend, okay. So, did Settlers Village ever manage to institute a, a block watch program? No, we reached out to several several folks out there and okay. never returned uh, the calls. All right, because yeah. I know Colony Point has one, and I think it's yes. time for a block watch meeting. Mm -hmm. If we can pinpoint maybe time of day, mm -hmm. days of week, that it's a problem, yeah. maybe that will help. Yeah, that would definitely. Policing. I don't know what we do for our <clears throat> historic downtown area. <clears throat> there is a Walmart subdivision that has a, at least a Facebook presence. Mm. Um, but maybe we enlisted some of the citizens' help yeah. in, you know, pinpointing information that would help. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, that's a good point. A lot of the times, awareness is probably the biggest. Uh, biggest piece in solving some of these situations um, having the folks in those areas be aware and once you get them involved they'll, they'll start making phone calls they'll start jotting down license plates and you know different things like that to, to kind of be our eyes out there when we're not there also <clears throat> kind of working together with uh, with our community uh, definitely helps so in a residential area, when you're exceeding the speed limit, and I don't know if you know this off the top of your head, what in general are the ticket amounts, like five over, 10 over? And if you're doing 40 miles an hour on a 25, what <laughs> does that constitute? Huge ticket. I a huge assume. ticket, yeah, it constitutes a summons. So okay. you have to, a summons, it's a mandatory court appearance. So oh. up to a certain, up to a certain speed limit, then it becomes a, a mandatory court appearance. So a lot of the times, under 10, under 15, under 15, it's a fine uh, with you know points taken off your license. But up above 15 and 20, it's a mandatory court appearance. Okay. 
Maybe we should make that public knowledge. Yeah. The fines and the I think that would be good. I, I think it's, um, I, we're getting ready to do our newsletter for um, October. Okay. And, um, you know, I did um, have uh, Danny, who's putting it together, um, to remind people that school's back in session. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps a piece like that in our newsletter um, might be beneficial. I mean, it, fair warning, <laughs> you know, this is what it could cost you. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only could you harm somebody, but on top of that, um, it, yeah. it could be pretty significant. I think that's a good idea because yeah. maybe you've got some parents that have high schoolers that they're not aware of the speeding problem. Yeah, no, I think uh, breaking those habits, that's, that's, one, that's one thing that we can do is notify the public because you always have those individuals, certain individuals that are always speeding through there. They're always speeding, just like, you know, you mentioned the white vehicle. Those are the folks that uh, don't care about the laws. They don't care about the speed limits. They don't care if, you know, families walking across the street. Um, they're just, they speed and they like to speed. So there are a lot of folks out there that are like that, but breaking the habit is is important, and um, notification to our community is important as well. Yeah, and I don't I don't think it's all high schoolers. I I think we have a variety of people mm -hmm. that are engaging in failing to stop, failing to look, speeding. Yeah. Um, and I do know that um, in that same area of that little white car, somebody hit and killed a cat right in front of the family and it was just the yeah. children were just mortified i guess so yeah and when you're going that fast you don't see right you don't see those things mm -hmm. you know it's mm -hmm. tunnel vision you don't see that stuff so yeah exactly mm -hmm. i do think that our crosswalks on broad street help tremendously i see mm -hmm. see uh, people stop that doesn't mean there's some that listen but yeah. uh Generally, I would say the public does a great job there, mm -hmm. and um, your speed indicator sign showing people yeah. how fast they go. Mm -hmm. I appreciate seeing it because yeah, it, yeah I think it, it does help tremendously. And that's another thing we can do is we can purchase other um, another speed limit uh, trailer, have those out in different locations, and how many do we have? We can do that too. We have one. Don't they have those that you could put on signs themselves that are solar? Yeah, at the, the ones that they have at the school zones? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, that show you what your speed is. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's been school yeah. zones, you're right. Yeah. Let's look into some of those. Okay, we can do that. Let's start reminding people how fast yeah. they're going. Yeah. Because I think sometimes people just are not aware. Yeah. And part of breaking those habits, part of those breaking the part of breaking those habits are yes. issuing more citations. So I think that's one of the things that we can do mm -hmm. in those areas, especially if it's it's a problem area. We're getting a lot of complaints out there. Mm -hmm. I think citations will um, will kind of calm that. I think those yeah. stationary ones are good, like coming in town, going out of town, where it's you know it's it's a almost a constant thing. But I think like Juneberry and these other areas having more than one trailer, that you can kind of. Yeah rotate around because like you said i think before is that it not only shows them their speed but it gives you some idea does it does some data logging or something of yep. how fast people are mm -hmm. average going and yeah it gives us and, yeah it gives us data Let's speed data how many cars go by there different things like that so yeah it's a good piece can we get the ones that take a picture and we can write a ticket off the picture no that one there does take pictures but it doesn't get close enough to where I mean, it'll show the car, it'll identify the car, but no, no um, license plate. Now we can get license plate readers too. I mean, that, that'll work as well. <laughs> Along with the picture of the person driving the car. Yeah. I disagree with the pictures and all that, but I do like getting more of those trailers that collect the data so you know where to patrol. Yeah. I think you would look good on a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, funny, funny story, funny story, we had a friend over and they have one parked on, what is that, Marjorie? And I took a video of him, and he just sprinted as fast as he could. He, he made it 21 miles an hour. Wow. It, it popped up. We were kind of curious how fast he would run, so yeah. he sprinted and showed 21, so we thought it was pretty good. <laughs>
Probably a picture of that, maybe. <laughs> and you know, with the with the town growing as well, there's a lot there's a lot more folks that come in here that, mm -hmm. you know, we're used to we're used to being a small town, and yeah. we're used to that. You know, folks just you know driving slow and stuff. But as a town grows, you're going to get folks that are going to come in here that, right. you know, a lot of speeders, a lot more kids. Um, but yeah, definitely we'll uh, we'll take a look at that. I'd like to I'd like to see what kind of plan you come up with and let's, yeah, let's see if yeah, we can get it under control before yeah. someone gets hurt, like something crashing into a train. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are those people okay? Uh, this morning? No. No. The, train. the incident. Yeah. 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 Okay. And that was another one where <laughs> you come off that highway on on two rivers and. If you're not paying attention, you just come up and um, if you're not, if you're looking at your phone or you, you just think it's just a straightaway, and you kind of mentioned that earlier, the straightaway, people, folks just think, okay, I'm going to speed up and there's nothing there at that. But he hit him from behind and he went into the train. So, yeah, wasn't paying attention. So, but yeah, they were fine. Okay. Other questions from the board? I'll take a motion to dismiss. Thank you, Chief Garcia. You're welcome. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 726 and we're done. Thank you very much. Good night.